Welcome back friends. This is the continuation of anatomy and today we have session 4. In today's session we are going to discuss about the elements of myology which is the study of muscles. The first citation in this session I am Dr. Mlelo and I have my contacts here and my email. If you don't understand anything you can contact me or you can ask me any question then I will see how to answer your question. Now let's start our, our session let's start our session myology is the anatomical study of the structure arrangement and action of muscles so in today's session is what we will go to see about the structure arrangement and action of muscles however we will not go into the deep details discussing about the muscles of each part of the body but we will discuss uh, the generalized structure of all muscles of the body and we will discuss about the muscles in different parts of the body how are they functioning and even how are they innovated, how are they supplied with the different kinds of food, nerves or blood vessels and things like that. So the details of uh, muscles may be of the thorax, head, neck or upper limb, they discuss the one will be discussing the regional anatomy. A muscle can be defined as the soft tissue of animal made up of muscle cells which produce a contraction that brings about a, a movement. Kwayo, one thing that you should know is that uh, a muscle is called the contractile tissue. So whether it is smooth, uh, it is skeletal, it is cardiac, it is contractile tissue. It has a bit to contract in response to stimulus. The stimulus can be can be brought by somatic nervous system or by autonomic nervous system. But muscles they have a bit to respond to stimulus and they respond by contracting. So uh, mechanisms of muscles contraction they are studied in in physiology but one thing that you should know is that the muscle is a contractile tissue now when a muscle when a muscle cell contracts it changes both its length and shape as how we shall see later because contraction of the muscle uh, causes its length to decrease by about one one third about one third or one half contraction of the muscle but its shape also changes because when it contracts it becomes as if it is thick so the the shape of the muscle cell differs when uh, changes when it contracts. Then what you are saying that a muscle cell or a muscle fiber or myocyte are bound together by a connective tissue to form muscle. So we have a number of muscle cells or muscle fibers. They are bound together to form a muscle, bound together by connective tissue to form a muscle, is how we shall see later. Other tissues which are associated with muscles, we have a uh, fascia, ligament and tendons. We discussed a little about ligament in the previous session but in this session again we will go into details of ligament and the uh, examples in different parts of the body. Now let's go to the classification of muscles. Uh, classification of muscles uh, can be based on different factors. For example uh, we can classify muscles either voluntarily or involuntarily based on how the muscle tissue is controlled. So, based on how the muscle tissue is controlled or it is innervated, when I'm saying innervated, manake nerve supply. Because muscle flani may cause supplied maybe by a certain nerve. That is what we call as innervation. Because we innervated. Tukisema biceps brachii is innervated by is innervated by a certain nerve. Manake tukitaja nerve flani kulembele. That is what we call as innervation of biceps blacky. So, yeah, according to the innervation of the muscle they can be classified as voluntarily or involuntarily. Voluntary muscles they are muscles which move under the control of will or cautious control such as skeletal muscles. Uh, actually voluntary muscles they are supplied by somatic nervous system. That means uh, they, they move under the conscious of the one who is moving. But in voluntary muscles they are smooth and cardiac muscles and they move without your will that is unconscious control that means they are they are controlled by autonomic nervous system and muscles also they can be classified based on the on the uh, structure or appearance and uh, based on this they can be classified as striated muscles which are marked by transverse dark light bands striations these dark or and light bands they are called striations so 
ini stretched muscles ile muscle fiber nakuta inakuwa kama ina ina mistari fulani that is what you call as striations and they are transverse transverse dark and light bands they are called striations as seen under the light microscope kwa kwa mfano mara nyingi atokaenda buchani here we are talking of human anatomy however the structure and even the appearance of the uh, human muscles like look to copy na muscles za uh, any mammal let's say it is cow or let's say it is pig utakuta kuona kwamba the appearance of their muscles they are similar kwa sababu ya evolutionary similarity kwa ukienda hata buchani ukinua nyama ya ngombe unasema tu nipeni steak now steak is the skeletal muscle kama ni steak ya nyama tu ya kawaida is the skeletal muscle lakini kama labda ni uh, moyo moyo ndo ni cardiac muscle and then ni kama ni intestine intestine the ya smooth muscles now steak is the cardiac muscle lakini in steak you can't see striations it is because if we want to see striation we must magnify uh, we must magnify uh, we must magnify the specimen which is meat and the high magnification of that meat we can observe striations so they are made up of elongated usually multi nucleated fibers and include skeletal and cardiac muscles of vertebrates of vertebrates so we shall discuss later in histology about the structure of skeletal and cardiac muscles how many number of nucleus they are present in each cell of skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle we shall study them later and another group is non striated muscles these do not have striations and they include skeletal muscle i mean smooth muscles sorry now classification of muscles we have three types of muscles based on microscopic or histological appearance of the muscle as i told you we shall see in histology how these muscles they they appear under microscope so we have skeletal cardiac and smooth muscle that is classification according to the histological appearance skeletal muscles they are most numerous and most important in performing different movement of the body as we said earlier that the skeletal muscles they move under the conscious or they are under control for uh, under control for somatic nervous system so they they move under voluntary control skeletal muscles are also called striated muscles and they are supplied or innervated by motor nerves and move voluntarily so also referred to as voluntary muscles ko hii ni group ya muscle pekee ambayo ina move under voluntary control and they are supplied or innervated by motor nerves so skeletal muscles they are not only uh, supplied by motor nerves kwa sababu ya kitu ambacho uh, there are some kind of the uh, information from tendons of the muscle they must be sent to the brain uh to either say that uh, this muscle is either contracted or it is relaxed kwa tutaenda kuona later about the about the innervation of the muscles lakini pia kwenye physiology to discuss about the proprioception proprioception ni ni tunakuwa tuna proprioceptor kwenye tendon zile pale zinapeleka the information about the muscle tone in the brain kwamba is whether the muscle has been contracted or has been relaxed kwa brain na kuna pata ulaisi kuweza ku, ku balance the body movement or to control the body movement and another type we have smooth muscles which are involuntary muscles which have no striations and consist of long spindle shaped cells closely arranged in a bundle or sheets so these which are put in a board these words which are put in a board they are very important to explain about the structure of smooth muscle they are found in walls of hollow viscera viscera manake ni body organs about ziko within the body viscera viscera so for example liver kidney they are viscera so uh, smooth muscles they are found in the walls of hollow viscera for example intestines also for gas uh, and things like that so we have for example GIT gastrointestinal tract GIT manake ni gut sometimes we call it gut manake ni digestive system yote the wall of the digestive system it is made up of smooth muscles lakini pia kwenye reproductive tract kwenye urinary tract zile 
all of the cellar zote zimekuwa media pofu the wall is media pofu of smooth muscles also the walls of blood vessels large ducts of compound glands respiratory passages and small bundles within the dermis of skin they are made up of smooth muscles and the last type is cardiac muscles they are secreted and involuntary muscles found in the heart and at the root of the major blood vessels leaving or entering the heart so cardiac muscles actually they are present only in the heart and on the root of the major blood vessels such as aorta and the vena cava inferior and superior vena cava when they are leaving the the heart the 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 present with the cardiac muscles kwa hiyo hiyo ni classification of muscles now let's go to the control of smooth and cardiac muscles which are involuntary smooth and cardiac muscles are supplied by sympathetic nerves of autonomic nervous system they are supplied by sympathetic nerves of autonomic nervous system so their actions are therefore involuntary while in skeletal muscles we know that uh, the contraction and relaxation is controlled voluntarily and this is simply uh, because of the proprioceptions as i told you that we have the proprioceptors proprioceptors zinachukua information from the skeletal muscles and they send them to the brain because zinachukua proprioceptors they are always present in tendons zinachukua information from tendons uh, regarding the muscle con uh, condition either it is contracted or it is relaxed now let's move to skeletal muscles the structure and the classification things like that so skeletal muscles are attached to the skeleton by other tissues as we said earlier that skeletal muscles they they are involved more in the movement of different body parts so they they, they must be attached to body tissues such as either a bone and sometimes they can be attached to uh, a certain ligament but most often skeletal muscles they are attached to a bone or a certain a certain surface marking of the bone now skeletal muscles they contract and relax and when they contract and relax they tend to move different body parts at a joint as we said uh, in elements of arthrology that joint they allow movement flexion extension and things like that all they can occur in in joints and what makes them to move is muscles contraction and relaxation of muscles and different actions of muscles they lead to movement of joint kama tutakavyoenda kuona mbele kwenye session tutakao tuna a flexor tutakao tuna primer tutaenda kuona kwa mbele action of muscles at joints zinafanya kazi gani and more special will be dealing with the skeletal muscle therefore they have two or more attachment one end of the muscle form the origin and the other form the insertion kwa skeletal muscle zinakuwa ni kama vile kwamba kitu kimejishika sehemu moja kinavuta kitu upande mwingine kwa kuna upande mmoja kunaitwa origin origin kule ndio ambako maso inakuwa kama imejishika kwa ile maso inakuwa inavuta upande mwingine kule inakovuta kunaitwa insertion so origin ni point ambayo maso imejishika insertion ni point ambayo maso inaenda kujishika na inavuta kwa maana katika movement katika movement origin huwa ina move list yani kidogo wakati insertion ndio ina move sana so insertion is the attachment that move the joint most and insertion is always near to the joint that is moved by that muscle kwa kama muscle ina move labda elbow joint always insertion hiyo muscle utakuta iko wapi jirani na elbow joint so the ends of skeletal muscle may be attached to any one of the following structure either bone or a cartilage or a ligament a tendon or aponeurosis or sometimes it is called apne aponeurosis kwa hiyo hivyo vitu ni nini tunataka kuona vizuri baadaye kwamba what the bone bone to share discuss kwenye osteology cartilage nayo to share discuss kidogo kwenye osteology na arthrology lakini ligament nayo to share discuss kidogo kwenye 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 arthrology tendon tunataka kuona later it is the structure which connects the muscle to a bone and apneurosis inakuwa ni certain kind of fiber ambazo zinakuwa zina zina cover the muscle we shall see later now the flesh part of the muscle is called the belly of the muscle kwa muscle inakuwa na tendon ambayo inaiattach kwenye origin inakuwa na tendon ambayo inaiattach kwenye insertion and then 
pale kuna kwa kuna flesh part ile mnaita steak ile nyekundu is what is called the bell of a muscle so now for example uh, this is the biceps black key and biceps black key hiyo jina biceps it is because it has two heads kwa hiyo ina, ina head moja hii hapa and it has another head here so this is the head of uh, biceps black key and this is the another head of biceps black key and then uh, it has the one insertion so it has two head but it has a single insertion manake hizi head zimetoka kujuu then zime combine somewhere hapa zimkuja ku insert in one bone now what you are saying ni kwamba this is what we can call it the muscle belly this which is in red color the muscle belly and then we have the tendon here this is the bone and here is the in the joint ambayo huku ndo insertion ni kwambia kwamba always hiyo muscle wena control movement ya ile joint ambayo it is near to its insertion so for example biceps black key can control the muscle uh, the movement of elbow joint and again in this uh, diagram we have uh, our scapula here we have the triceps black key and we have the the tendons of uh, this is the tendon of biceps black key and here this is the insertion of biceps black key mm, in the in the radius and this is the insertion of triceps black key on the olecranon process of ulna this is ulna so tunaenda kuona uh, details za hivi vitu lakini hivyo ndivyo ambavyo nitakiona unajua kwa uchache this muscle is called the triceps black key kwa sababu gani na three heads one two three heads this black biceps black key it's because so we shall see later on the nomenclature of muscles and uh, this is the just the continuation of um, examples of muscles for example this is the biceps biceps black key contracted kuna kuna kwamba inavyokuwa contracted it is shape ina become kama vile thick and it become short kwa hili uh, tunavyokuwa tuna muscle ambayo iko relaxed uh, ikiwa relaxed ina, ina become long and ina become like thin so we have uh, the origin of uh, one among the head of uh, triceps brachii uh, and then we have the insertion of triceps triceps brachii on the olecranon process then you have the uh, bones of the of the forearm which are ulna and the radius as you can see the biceps brachii it may insert kwenye radius and then the ulna it may establish insertion ya nani ya triceps brachii then you have the tendon hivi vile tunaweza kaulizwa kwenye mcq either direct au kama si direct basi utaulizwa kwenye namna ambayo utapewa explanation then the explanation we need you to know where the insertion of biceps black key where the insertion of um, triceps black key and the action of these muscles tunaenda kuona baadaye they act antagonistically so biceps black key kama yeye anafanya flexion or uh, triceps triceps black key anafanya nini extension tunaenda kuona later now Let's see about the organization or the internal structure of of a skeletal muscle. A skeletal muscle uh, it is made up of um, just like uh, coverings or membrane which cover it. They are actually connective tissues. So they are not uh, membrane as the uh, the cell membrane but they are connective tissues. So we have the epimysium, epimysium and external sheath, external sheath of dense connective tissue surrounding the entire muscle. Epimysium then you have perimysium peri is just like between epi means above so epimysium covers outside perimysium is just like in between it covers this is the thin septa of connective tissue around each bundle of muscle fiber each bundle of muscle fiber epimysium covers entire muscle perimysium covers bundle of muscle fiber and endomysium covers one bundle i mean it covers one fiber So endomysium a delicate layer of connective tissue surround each muscle fiber. So epimysium cover the whole muscle, perimysium cover a band of uh, band of muscle fiber and the endomysium covers only single muscle fiber. It is composed mainly of basal lamina and the reticular fibers. So this is what I was explaining. We have the epimysium covering the the whole muscle outside which is Lebanon blue then you have the 
the perimesium which cover the band of muscle fiber so we have the one two three four five six muscle fibers and then we have the perimesium perimesium covering the band of muscle fiber and then you have the endomesium endomesium covering a single muscle fiber endomesium and which is labeled in black it is in, it is the muscle fiber itself the skeletal muscle fiber so in discussion of muscles we discuss more about the skeletal muscles rather than other types of of muscles so this is the diagram which show the organization of mediums and this is the actual because this this was the drawing but this is the actual what happens so we have the muscle fiber here and then muscle fiber is covered by endomesium then you have the fascicle here wrapped by perimesium so we have the perimesium covering the uh, the band of muscle fiber and then you have the epimesium covering the whole muscle so here at the end you have the tendon and here the bone here in the tendon is where always you have the proprio receptors taking the information about the contraction state of the muscle it is either contracted or relaxed so in the internal structure of skeletal muscle muscle fiber may run in various directions so here we have just saw about the membranes which cover the muscle fibers but muscle fibers themselves they can run in different direction and different muscles they have different arranges of arrangement of muscle fibers so muscle fibers they arrange in different direction producing different contraction effects in in muscles so in some muscles the fibers bundle may run in only one direction but in other fibers groups may run in different direction and act at different axes to produce different movement because it is also run in different directions in our corner come very parallel fibers where is it about in a in a running in different direction they are not parallel fibers so during contraction a skeletal muscle so muscle fibers they have different kinds of arrangement either parallel or not parallel in different axes producing different types of movement and during contraction the muscle tend to shorten as i told you before tend to shorten either one third or half of which is resting length as how we shall see later in detail about this so the arrangement of fibers can be parallel arrangement or can be oblique in a parallel arrangement muscle fiber run parallel to the long axis or line of pull of a muscle so we are classifying either parallel or oblique depending on the line of pull of a muscle the muscle tend to contract in what direction this muscle will produce maximum effect range of movement during contraction as compared with the oblique line fibers so these parallel parallel muscles or muscles which have the fibers arranged or running in a parallel fashion they can produce different kinds of movement examples of these muscles you have sartorius muscle you have lectus abdominis muscle and you have the sternocleidomastoid muscle we shall see later about these muscles their position and even the nomenclature and then you have the oblique arrangement of muscle fiber muscle fiber lani oblique to the long axis or line of pull of a muscle to have some line of pull of a muscle we mean the direction of contraction in a muscle in a in a contract grip when it contracts so we are uh, considering the fiber they are arranged either oblique or they are arranged parallel depending on the relative position which is the line of pull of a muscle so these muscles are penetri muscles they are generalized the name is penetri muscles and you have the different categories of penetri muscles as we shall discuss in, in the next slides but examples we have the extensor digitorum longus muscle and the lectus femoris muscle so the letter m at the end of the name means muscle just the abbreviation of a muscle so we have the types of penetri muscles we have unipenetri a muscle of a tendon on one end side eg rectus abdominis muscle however rectus abdominis it is the parallel it is one among the the muscles which the fiber they have been arranged in, in a parallel fiber and then you have bipenetri 
by penetrating muscles. These are tendon at the center of the muscle with fibers from both ends passing into it, such as rectus femoris. Kwa tunda kuna jinsi fibers zime zimejipanga na tunda kuna ata muscles inyo jinsi gani how are they observed? Rectus femoris hiyo ni muscle ambayo iko kwenye lower limb. Then you have mat pennant may have a tendon at its center with fibers from various direction or may have a series of bipennant muscle lying along alongside one another such as deltoid muscle and another example is tibialis anterior muscle. Deltoid muscle it is positioned at the shoulder and the tibialis anterior muscle it is mass of the of the leg and about the strength of penet muscles because penet muscles they have fibers which are not parallel or they have fibers which are oblique they are always stronger coperent muscles ni stronger as compared to the namanisha zinaweza katengeneza strong or powerful contraction as compared to the muscles which have fibers ambazo ni parallel ko parallel parallel fibers za muscles zinasababisha muscle iweze kufanya movement nyingi lakini penet fibers za muscles zinasababisha au oblique fibers za muscle zinasababisha muscle iweze kuwa strong in contraction au powerful so for a given volume of a muscle substance penet muscle have many more fibers compared to the muscles with parallel fibers arrangement and they are therefore more powerful range of movement has been sacrificed for strength ko range of movement have been sacrificed for strength manake nini kwamba uh, oblique arrangement of fibers inapunguza movement oblique arrangement of fibers inafanya muscle iweze kufanya only few movements so it has decreased the range of movement but is it, it has increased the strength of contraction kuna kuja kuona kwamba muscle is powerful but it can perform only few movement so tumepata hasara ya range of movement lakini tumepata importance of strength of contraction so for example here we have the uh, parallel fibers arrangement which are straps and here they are strapped with the tendinous intersections as in the rectus abdominis muscle but we will discuss later in the when we will be discussing about the abdomen and even the next slides we shall see about the rectus abdominis also for example this is the unipenet muscle ambayo inakuwa na oblique a learning fiber kuna kuta maybe we have tendon in one side and then in the other side we have we have maybe a, a bone where the muscle goes there to join with the tendon and then it is inserted there and also we have the bipennate kama unavyoweza kuona hapo kwenye bipennate kwamba tunako tuna tuna just like two tunako na just like two to uh oblique arranged fibers kuna kuna side hiyo kuna side hiyo we may have a tendon maybe uh in between and then he must naweza kawa kwa inaenda kwenye set somewhere and in set somewhere so this tendon can be either origin or this tendon may be insertion kama hapo tena kuona baadaye kuhusu different muscles tena kuona about the origin and insertion then you have mat pennant kama unaweza kuona hapo kwamba tunakuwa na different tendon and we have different structures ambazo hiyo muscle inaweza kaenda ku ku attach au inaweza ka originate from either it's the origin or insertion of a certain muscle and then hii ni diagram ambayo inaonyesha the state of a muscle when it is relaxed or it is contracted so you must note the change in length and shape of the muscle when it is contracted this is the shape of the muscle when it is relaxed and this is the shape of the muscle when it is contracted uh, the the thickness of fibers tend to increase in in cases of contraction and even the shape it tend to become thick uh, all of these two diagrams this one and this one they are taken from the snezi snezi clinical anatomy so it's just the clinical anatomy by regions which the book written by Sinel. Ko ukienda ku visit ni part of introduction you will see these diagrams. Now let's go to the very important part and very interesting part about the naming of skeletal muscles. Naming of skeletal muscles. When we are naming skeletal muscles is how we shall see later 
uh, we have a variety of names of skeletal muscles but this is very important in order to memorize for you to memorize uh, different muscles where they located in the body and what function they are performing so in terms of naming skeletal muscles we have different factors which are used in naming first we have the shapes or arrangement of fiber either parallel or, or oblique we have size of the muscle we have number of heads or bellies we have position regional wise we have depth we have attachments and actions kwa tunaenda kuangalia kimoja baada ya kingine na tunaenda kuona kwamba why a certain muscle it is named maybe pectoralis major tunaenda kuona why it is named uh any, any, any name of the muscle maybe it is sternocleidomastoid muscle tunaenda kuona kwa nini inaitwa hivyo now this table summarizes uh, the nomenclature of muscle and it is taken from the snell's anatomy kwa uki, ukiona hii table hii inakusamalizia all criteria about the naming of muscles for example in shape in shape we have some of the muscles which are triangular kwa mfano nani deltoid kwa muscle ambayo ni triangular inapewa jina deltoid muscle ambayo ni round inapewa jina teres half muscle ambayo ni straight inapewa jina rectus kwa kwa mfano muscle inaitwa rectus abdominis jina rectus limetokana kwamba it is straight straight then the name abdominis ni kwa sababu ya position it is present at the abdomen unaona teres major the name teres ni kutokana kwamba it is round then major kutokana nini size kwa hiyo kwenye kwenye hapa size kwenye hapa size kuna zile ambazo zenyewe ni large kwenye size we have large large zinakuwa zinapewa jina major we have broadest zinaitwa latissimus and we have longest ambazo zinaitwa longissimus so kwa mfano kuna maso moja ambayo iko kwenye back inaitwa latissimus dorsi latissimus dorsi the word latissimus it is because it is broad and dorsi it is because of position iko nyuma yan dorso kwa hivyo ndivyo ambavyo tunaenda pia kuna nini number of heads or bellies maana hapa nakupa tu recap ili kwamba tutakavyo na mbele nakupa nakupa introduction ili kwamba tunavyo na mbele tu tunafanya vitu faster kwa kuna number of heads number of heads tunaweza kuwa tuna two heads tukiwa na two heads inaitwaje biceps bi means two then tunaweza kuwa tuna four heads inaitwaje quadriceps quadriceps then tunaweza kuwa tuna two bellies inaitwaje digastric so kwa mfano tunaenda kuona kuna kuna maso labda kwenye upper limb kwenye mkono inaitwa biceps brachii biceps brachii biceps maana yake ni ina two heads then brachii ni kwa sababu ya inakuwa kwenye arm position in the arm now we are moving to position factor ya nne hiyo position of the chest inaitwa pectoralis for example tunakuwa tuna pectoralis major pectoralis major ni maso ambayo iko kwenye chest kwa major ni kutokana na size then pectoralis ni position haya tunakoo tuna above above spine of scapula kwa mfano uh, maso ikiwa kwenye position ambayo ni above spine of scapula hizi ni just examples kwa sio maso zote zina zina zinakwepo kwa mfano ikiwa above spine of scapula inaitwa supraspinatus kwa tuna maso inaitwa supraspinatus maso is because it is above the spine of scapula hiyo tutaenda kuona sasa kwenye tutakapokuwa na discuss upper limb tena kuona structure of scapula then tuna tunavyozungumza spine what is the spine of scapula and then for example mass of the arm it is called brachii tena kuona pia kuna mass of the lower limb kutokana na position nyingine ndio zinaitwa femoris eh, nyingine zinaitwa labda tibialis tibialis anterior tibialis tibialis ni kwa sababu pale position ilipo kuna tibia anterior maana yake iko mbele kwa tena kuona different types of of muscles when we we'll be discussing about different parts of the body like in this is just an introduction ndio maana hapo tunasema kwamba it is elements of um, myology tuna discuss about introduction then tuna depth kama maso iko deep yani iko ndani tunaita profundus kama iko superficial tunaita superficialis na kama iko nje tunaitwa externus kwa kuna maso tunasema labda 
extensa longas profundas au superficialis manake nini tunasuka tuna ile muscle labda extensa inafanya kazi ya ku extend hiyo ni action longas manake ni ndef this long then superficialis kwa sababu it is it is external au it is it is superficial kwa hiyo manake wakati mwingine unaweza kukuta kuna muscle nyingine hapo hapo inaitwa extensa longus profundus kwa manake unakuta kwamba there are two muscles with different names lakini kinachotofautisha uh, ile kule mushoni is because of the depth and then we have uh, and then we have the attachment of the muscle attachment of the muscle also can can alter its nomenclature kwenye attachment hapo attachment of the muscle different muscles in a different attachments kwa utaenda kuona about different muscles lakini kwa mfano unaona kuna hii muscle inaitwa sternocleidomastoid muscle sternocleidomastoid muscle kwa hiyo hapa inatoka kwenye sternum sternum ndio liko toa jina sterno then inaenda ina, ina, inaenda kwenye clavicle yani kwenye clavicle pale inajigusa na hapo kwenye clavicle origin yake ni sternum pamoja na clavicle ina head moja lakini ndio origin ilivyo yani it is origin imeanza kwenye sternum pamoja na clavicle one head so imejigusa pia kwenye clavicle so sterno cleido 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 imetoka kwenye clavicle then inafika kwenye mastoid process mastoid process of the temporal bone kwa unakuja kuona kwamba sterno cleido mastoid muscle kwa tumeongeza tu jina muscle kule mshoni lakini the whole name of the muscle ni attachment zake lakini pia kuna muscles kwa mfano from the coracoid process to arm from the coracoid process to arm hiyo inaitwa coracobrachialis tena kuna kwenye muscles of the upper limb coracobrachialis muscle again tuna 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 many many muscles kama tutakavyoenda kuona baadaye tunavyoenda kuona huko mbele this is just the basic discussion of the muscle then you have the action the muscle which tend to extend inaitwa extensor inayo flex inaitwa flexor na inayo constrict inaitwa a constrictor kwa kwenye action huku zinachukua majina direct lakini huku kwingine kwingi nakuta kwa mfano triangle huko inakuja kuchukua deltoid kwa nakuta uh, kitu kilichoko huku that is the reality of what happens in the muscle ni different na wapi kwa sio kama profundus ukashanga what is profundus lazima unajua hizo anatomical terminologies now let's go to uh, describe these features in detail with the examples we are starting with the shape and regarding on shape we have triangular this is the deltoid muscle ambayo iko kwenye shoulder hii ni ni bega so tuna muscle nyingine hapa and this is the pectoralis major lakini this is the deltoid muscle which is triangular in shape kama ambavyo unaweza kuiona hapo ni triangular deltoid then you have teres which is round kwa hizo teres tunaenda kuona kwa baadaye we have teres major teres minor then you have the rectus ambayo rectus inakuwa straight kwa kama unavyoweza kuona kwamba teres which is round ndio hii hapa this is an example of teres this is a teres minor and then teres major in this muscle so uh teres sometimes hizi muscle unavyoombea triangular usitegemee utaona triangle kabisa but it resembles a triangle or when we are saying it is round you don't don't think to ikuta round kabisa but it resemble a round lakini kwa mfano hii straight tunaona kabisa rectus abdominis muscle it is straight presenting with the tendinous intersections so we have the rectus abdominis as i will discuss later in detail on the rectus abdominis and the other muscles on, of the abdomen when we discussing about the about the anatomy of the abdomen Now for example this is the trapezius muscle kama unaweza kuona kwamba uh, hii haina shape maalum yani actually it is trapezius shape yake ni kama trapeza umbo la trapeza that's why it is called trapezius uh, this is just the nomenclature of muscles depending on the shape now let's move to size kama size tu vusema kama kuna meja inakuwa kubwa latissimus inakuwa broadest na longissimus inakuwa longest So for example here we have the muscle I'm not sure if you can see it clear lakini here we have the latissimus dorsi latissimus dorsi imetoka kuchini hii inaitwa thoracolumbar fascia kutoka kwenye uh, thoracolumbar fascia 
tunakona la Tismas dosi hapa imetoka kwenye Thora Colombo fascia imeenda imepanda kujui imeingia hapo kwenye bega imeenda kufanya insertion hapo kwa unakuja kuona kwamba this muscle is very bloody ime cover almost uh, the whole part of the back the whole part of the back however deep to it we have different types of muscle kama ambavyo kwa wale ambao mtakao mnaenda ku dissect cadavers you will see this muscle but even if you don't uh, dissect cadavers unaweza kuiona tu kwenye atlas zako how it appears and then for example in terms of major we have our example is pectoralis major uh, position of the muscle is pectoral at the thorax and because it is large that's why it's called pectoralis major another example tumeshaona kwenye teres tuna major na minor it is because of size na pia tuna longest mfano ni longissimus muscle ambazo hizi hapa ziko kwenye back deep to the latissimus dorsi we have different types of muscles including longissimus muscle kama unavyoweza kuona kwamba uh, we have the vertebral column hapo na pia tuna hizi longissimus muscle zimetoka kuchini the nalan mpaka kuja kuinsert huku chini na maanisha zimetoka huku juu zimekuja kuinsert huku chini uh, then depending on size also we have the rhomboid minor and the rhomboid major for example hapo unaweza usielewe rhomboid minor is only this belly and the rhomboid major is from here to here kwa unaweza kuona jinsi gani ni kubwa major kutoka hapa hadi hapa is compared with the minor and about the number of bellies kama tulivyo sema kwamba number of bellies au heads tunakuwa na different types of muscles for example biceps biceps blacki biceps maana kuna two heads triceps three heads uh, for example triceps ni triceps blacki ya kwenye upper limb tushaiona hata kule mwanzoni na pia tuna quadriceps ambayo ina four heads hiyo iko kwenye lower limb kwenye mguu quadriceps hii hapa inaitwa quadriceps quadriceps ah uh, hii quadriceps ina four heads na ina, ina, ina ni kama vile ina branches unaona kuna rectus femoris rectus femoris is one among the part of quadriceps femoris kwa quadriceps hiyo muscle kuitwa quadriceps inakuwa ina muscle nne ndogo ndogo ndani unaona kuna rectus femoris kuna vestus intermedius kuna vestus medialis na vestus lateralis kwa vestus intermedius vectus lateralis pamoja na vectus medialis tukijumlisha na rectus femoris tunakuwa tuna four muscles all together they are called quadriceps kwa sababu gani kwa sababu hizi zote huku chini zinakuja kuungana zinatengeneza one tendon kwa kwa sababu zinakuja kutengeneza one tendon that's why licha ya kuzinem as independent muscle wakaweza kuinemu hata one muscle kwa hapo naona vastus intermedius ni kama ionekani hapa ni kama wamerebo kwenye rectus femoris but what actually means ni kwamba vastus intermedius iko deep to the rectus femoris kwa tukitoa rectus femoris hapo tukikata hii tendon tukikata tendon kama hapo tukakata tendon tukatoa rectus femoris deep to it we shall see vastus intermedius kwa pia unaweza kuona kwa jifunza different things kwa mfano unaweza kuona hapa fibers jinsi gani ambavyo zinaweza zikarani unaona hapa kuna we have obliquus fibers na inaonyesha kabisa rectus femoris is bipennate obliquus fibers nyingine zimetoka huko nyingine zimetoka huko so it is bipennate au ukiangalia kwa mfano the vestas uh, medialis it is seen as, as a unipennate muscle kwa sababu gani the line of contraction of these muscles is in this way sababu hizi zinaweza zina contract for example all of the quadriceps kazi yake kubwa kazi yake kubwa ni kufanya extension of the leg kwa kama zinafanya extension of the leg at the knee joint maana the line the line of con, uh, contraction is this way but the fibers the melani this way line of contraction in this way fibers the melani this way so that's why you can we can name them as obliquus and then we have digastric digastric maana yake inakuwa ina two bellies for example you have the digastric muscle here pa kama tavana to discuss about the head and neck this is one among the very important uh, muscle to know kwa sababu ya vile ambavyo ime divide the neck into different triangles kama tavana to discuss about the triangles of the neck and then you have the name according to position or region here we have pectoralis at the pectoral out of the chest then you have the supraspinatus 
above the spine of scapula. This is the scapula bone and then you have the spine of scapula here. So above the spine of scapula we have supraspinatus. Below infra, infra below, above supra. So infraspinatus muscle the muscle below the spine of scapula and supraspinatus is above the, the spine. So even in, in pectoralis muscle also we have the pectoralis major and minor. Major and minor it's because of size. But uh, in terms of region it is pectoralis. And then you have blacky, blacky ni muscles am kono. Kwa kumvano when you are saying biceps blacky means it is biceps it is because it has two heads and blacky is because mass of the arm. And then according to depth we have profundus which is deep. We have superficialis which is superficial and externus which is external. So you can see for example here we have the flexor digitolum superficialis. Flexor digitolum superficialis means we have another mass which can be named as flexor digitolum profundus. But one thing to note here ni kwamba sio kila mass yenye superficialis na profundus. Lakini mara nyingi kila mass yenye superficialis huwa inakuwa na profundus kwa sababu lengo la kunem kama profundus ni ili ku differentiate na superficialis. Unaona kwa mfano pia tuna mass nyingine hapa flexor pollicis longus maana yake flexor pollicis ni kwa sababu inafanya kazi ya ya kuflex uh, pollicis hiyo ina flex kidole gumba kidole gumba lakini pia kuna flexor digitolum profundus digitolum maana yake na flex digits zote hivi vidole and more special hapo tunakuna zungumza hivi vidole vinne kwa first finger tunachukulia ni thumb from the second finger to the fifth finger ndo tunachukua ni flexor digitolum profundus inafanya kazi ya kuflex hizi vidole lakini pia kuna kwa mfano hapa chini nakuta kuna gluteus medius hiyo atuangalie sana minimus atuangalie uh, sana that is because of size piriformis lakini kuna kwa mfano kuna superior gamelius superior gamelius mass superior superior maana is because iko juu hasa kuna tofauti kati ya juu ya superior na juu ya superficial but then I, I, I think because we have already learned them in language of anatomy it is very easy for you to understand me. then you have the obturator internus inferior gamelius obturator internus obturator externus kwa hizo kona external zinaitwa externus internus zinaitwa internus lakini superficial inaitwa superficial inaitwa superficialis na zile deep zinaitwa profundus according to attachment unaona kwa mfano uh, this is collacoblacialis muscle ime originate kwenye collacoid process of i i i scapula ko scapula kwa mfano uh, this is the collacoid process and this is the olecranon process kwa mfano hii clavi kwa imeenda kwa touch kwenye olecranon process this is the collacoid process tunaenda kuona later lakini unaona e collacoblacialis blakini shas tu shasama of the arm inafanya kazi kwenye arm lakini collaco it is because it is origin is collacoid process uh, pia maso nyingine ni very common maso stenocloid mastoid maso unaweza kuona hii maso inaitwa stenocloid mastoid maso we have the clavicle here we have the sternum and then muscle the process of the temporal bone. Kwa hiyo kuna hii muscle imeanzia hapo kwenye sternum pia kuna head nyingine pale imetoka hapo kwenye clavicle zote zimeenda kwenye state kwenye muscle the process. So sternum plus clavicle to muscle the process. Sterno cladal muscle the muscle. Name according to action we have extensor flexor pamoja na constrictor kutegemea na inafanya kazi gani hiyo maso for example unaweza kuona hapo kwamba tunapokuwa na wrist joint wrist joint action zake zinakuwa sasa sio wrist joint peke yake all joints they are moved by skeletal muscles kwa sio maso zote zitapewa name according to action lakini this is how waliweza kunem baadhi ya maso kwa mfano flexor capi radialis flexor capi 
radialis Kwa kwa mfano the name radialis ni kwa sababu e, iko jirani na radius bone lakini flexa capi ulnaris it is because it is near ulna au iko upande wa ulna flexa capi radialis flex flexa kwa kazi yake kwa sababu it is because it tend to flexes the fingers kazi yake ni flex i mean sio fingers it is capo bones that's why it is flexa capi capi ni kwa sababu zimeenda kwa touch kwenye couple bones na ina 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 nani wrist joint inafanya flexion of the wrist joint also unaweza kuona kuna extensor capi analis na extensor digitorum extensor digitorum ina extend digits extensor capi analis pia nayo kazi yake ni ku extend lakini na extend nini couple bones kuna maana kuta extensor capi here is also the nomenclature of muscles according to action unaweza kwa kwa mfano kuna faringeo rep kuna kuna uh, staphylococcus muscle but kuna superior constrictor superior constrictor muscle maana kinafanya kazi ku constrict middle constrictor pamoja na inferior constrictor of the pharynx maana yake lakini pia unaweza kuona hizi muscle jinsi gani ambavyo ziko hapa ni bipendent Maana kuna kuna tendon fulani hii hapa inaitwa pharyngeal rep then tunakuwa tuna fibers the melani obliquus sababu hii maso maana yake action yake sio sawa na running of fibers so the melani obliquus that's what you can call it the penet na jaribu ku memorize na vitu vya nyuma ili uweze ku ku understand more what you are discussing now we have finished the the nomenclature of muscles and let's move to the nerve supply of skeletal muscle skeletal muscles are innervated by a nerve trunk which is mixed nerve about 60% is motor and 40% is sensory and is responsible for contraction and relaxation of the muscle kama nimbo kwambia kwamba nako na proprioceptors in the tendon and this they carry information about the state of the muscle whether it is contracted or it is relaxed so the nerve enter the muscle at about the midpoint on its depth surface often near the margin and the place of interest it is known as the motor motor point hapo ndipo ambapo nerve inakwenda ingia kwenye maso so a single nerve supplies several muscle fiber and may, may supply more than one muscle single nerve in a supply many muscle fiber when a muscle is in relaxed state it is always in partial contraction thus it is known as a muscle tone kwa muscle tone ina determine a state of contraction of the muscle na muscle hata kama isipokuwa imekuwa ina impasse lakini huwa inakuwa na a certain state of contraction partial kidogo sana that is what you call is muscle tone even if it is resting kwa kuna kwa kuna kitu nakita uh, motor unit motor unit inakuwa made up by the muscle fiber uh, inakuwa made up of the nerve and the muscle fibers which are supplied by that nerve so for example here we have the uh, about five muscle fibers nakuja kuona kwa mfano kuna hii motor unit namba 2 motor unit namba 2 i mean e motor nerve it may supply fiber yale pale fiber yale pale na fiber yale pale so the motor nerve or motor neuron supplying the muscle fibers and the fibers which are supplied they are collectively called at the motor unit so we have the first motor unit these are spinal nerves from spinal cord and they supply the skeletal muscle so any muscle at any point have some fibers in relaxed state that means muscle tone or full contracted this makes sure that there is no muscle fatigue in the body perform these various function ko muscle nerve kwa ime contract sio sio fiber zote zinakuwa zimekuwa contract some of them zinakuwa zina partial contraction lakini tunachomaanisha hapo pia ni kwamba even at resting sio all fibers of the muscle will rest also some fibers will remain in a certain contracted state and that lead to the prevention it prevent muscle fatigue and muscle fatigue ni kama vile muscle ni become flaccid flaccid inakuwa imelegea kinakuwa ni kama kitu fulani kicholoa kuna kwa imelegea kama vile ambavyo unaweza kuona kama mtu labda akiwa 
kunya labda kama ameumwonja sana ile hali ya kulegea sana kwa muscles what we call is flaccid now the degree of tonicity of a muscle is determined by sensory receptors in the muscle known as muscle spindle and the tendon spindle which send sensory information via a general sensory nerve ko more details of the muscle how are they contract and things like that they are discussed in in physiology now this information is known as proprioception information explaining about the contractive state of the muscle they are called proprioception during contraction the degree of contraction of a muscle likewise is sensed by receptors and the information is taken into the cell bodies of the motor neuron in the central nervous system that means the brain and the spinal cord for regulatory purposes when there is a nerve lesion below the nerve of spinal cord the muscle tone is lost muscle tone is a partial spatial contraction ya muscle hata kama hatuna stimulation and therefore the muscle is said to be flaccid kwa muscle huwa ikikosa iki nerve supply ina become flaccid maana inakuwa ni kama vile imetoa mfano hapo nyuma ni become flaccid and when there is a lesion involving the higher motor neurons kwa hiyo lower lower motor neuron higher motor neuron that is physiology we discuss it more in physiology or even in, in neuroanatomy just stay with me then we discuss it in neuroanatomy so when there is a lesion involving the higher motor neurons in the spinal cord or brain there is a possibility of increased muscle tone and the muscle become hypertonic hypertonic hyper means above or excessive so hypertonic muscle manake muscle itakuwa ina contract muda mwingi ile tone ya muscle ya kawaida itakuwa imeongezeka and is because of the lesion of the nerves above the level of spinal cord either to the to the brain it can be uh tena kuna baadaye kwamba we have the first motor neuron ya uh, yani tunakotuna tuna motor neuron ambayo inagusa maso then from there it, itafanya connection na motor neuron nyingine let's see kwa spinal cord then from there it, it it can connect with another nerve let let's say the nerve of medulla it depends on the on the pathway ambayo inakuwa inatumika kwenye hiyo hiyo nerve supply yako so we have the actions let's move to actions of skeletal muscle skeletal muscle they they perform four basic actions kuna prime mover antagonist fixator and synergist ko prime mover is sometimes known as agonist a prime mover or agonist is the main muscle or one of the main group of muscle responsible to perform a certain movement ko kuna muscle flani ambayo tunajua kabisa kwenye flexion this is the muscle au kwenye extension this is the muscle which is involved that is what you can call a the prime mover maana tuki remove prime mover hiyo movement haiwezi kufanyika au tukiondoa nerve supply to the prime mover hiyo movement haiwezi kufanyika au kama itafanyika very weak now it contracts while being resisted by another muscle ambayo inaitwa antagonist ko agonist na antagonist zinafanya kazi kwa kutofautiana for example triceps brachii ko na unajua nikisema triceps unajua kwamba it has three head brachii of the arm na triceps brachii inafanya kazi ya extension so it the prime mover in extension of the forearm at the elbow joint na ndio maana essential yake iko at the olecranon process which is olecranon process of the ulna ulna bone which is near the elbow joint then you have the antagonist antagonist ni muscle au group ya muscle ambayo ina oppose action of prime mover mover for example quadriceps femoris quadriceps femoris ambayo tumeisha discuss pale nyuma ni combination of four muscles quadriceps femoris extends the knee extends the knee joint wakati biceps femoris opposes this movement therefore biceps femoris is an antagonist then we have fixator fixator muscle is in a muscle that contract to stabilize the origin of a prime mover to increase its effectiveness ko fixator yenyewe inasaidia prime mover 
iweze kuwa effective au inafanya kazi ya kustabilize primal mover such as the muscles attaching the shoulder girdle to the trunk contract as fixator to allow the deltoid to act on the shoulder joint kwa shoulder joint movement yake sasa inategemea deltoid lakini la than deltoid we have other muscles as how to come discuss kule huko mbele kuna muscles zinaitwa rotator cuff muscles a group of four muscles ambazo zinafanya kazi katika ku stabilize the shoulder joint kwa hiyo unakuja kuona kwamba zile muscles zinaweza kuitwa kama fixator and then we have the synergist these muscles stabilize intermediate joint closely by plyma mover kwa hiyo hizi muscles zinasaidia katika ku stabilize intermediate joints ambazo plyma mover anakuwa anafanya kazi so extensor and flexors of wrist joint contract to stabilize the wrist joint while the long extensors and flexors are acting on the fingers kwa tunako tuna wrist joint lakini pia tunako tuna maso nyingine ambazo zinako zimetoka kwenye forearm kwenda kwenye fingers kama vile tutazidi discuss kwenye kwenye upper limb so this is the diagram illustrating the action of agonist a primary mover and the action of antagonist for example you have the quadriceps which is the muscle of the lower limb and you have the biceps when these quadriceps act in this direction are the biceps femoris tend to oppose the, the action when this tend to act in this direction now this diagram also illustrates the how the elbow joint movement this is the plyma mover which is agonist biceps brachii muscle then you have the synergist biceps brachii muscle i mean brachialis muscle which is synergist it help the the action of the biceps uh, biceps brachii muscle then you have the antagonist antagonist triceps brachii muscle uh, and you have the fixator muscle that hold the the scapular family in the in the place such as the lomboidus muscle as we shall discuss later in the in the upper limb but this is the example of the four actions of, of skeletal muscles and another diagram is here but if you have already understood in the uh, in the previous diagram here we have some of the tendons of different muscles such as the flexor carpi radialis and the flexor digitorum profundus so for example this uh, tend to flex the carpal bones and this flexor digitorum profundus tend to uh, flex the digits as well and here we have the extensor digitorum so for example the action of extensor digitorum and the flexor digitorum they are antagonists to each other so if we can name the extensor digitorum as agonist then flexor digitorum will be antagonist the vice versa to this statement is also true now let's see about the, some of the structures which tend to associate with the muscles and let's start discussing about the fascia fascia the band or sheet of dense connective tissue that lie beneath or deep the skin that attaches stabilizes encloses and separates the muscle and the other internal organs so as you can see here the fascia can perform different functions such as attachment stabilization enclosing or even separating the compartments of the of a certain part of the body maybe it's the leg or it's the thigh depending on that position of the body so it is the dense connective tissue because it has more fibers compound than cellular and ground substance so fibers are irregularly arranged to form layers or sheets we have two types of fascia we have superficial fascia or sometimes it's known as subcutaneous tissue it lies beneath the skin it is the mixture of loose alveolo and adipose tissues that unites the dermis of the skin and the underlying deep fascia so superficial fascia is made up of the alveolo and the adipose tissues adipose, adipose tissues they are fat in the origin is just like 
accumulation of fat below the skin. And then you have the deep fascia, lies between the skin and the underlying muscle and bone, enclosing muscle and other structures. Also, deep fascia is the one which is responsible even to separate different compartments of, of the leg. Now, function of fascia, it provides support and attachment of different body structures. For example, nerve, blood, and lymphatic vessels. Nerve, blood, lymphatic vessels, lymphatic nodes, and organs are held in place or covered by fascia. They form fascial space. This is the second, second function. So sometimes we shall discuss later, we will see some of the triangles uh, in different parts of the body. And those triangles, they can, they can have uh, maybe nerve and blood vessel and lymphatic vessel. All of them, they pass through a certain, a certain kernel, and that kernel is covered by fascia. Also, they, they, can, uh, fascia, they, they, they can form fascial space, such as in the face and neck, and they play an important role in the spread of infections. When the infections they are spreading, they follow the route of fascia. So this uh, diagram just illustrates, for example, here we have the Thola Colombo fascia. I'm about to show you another Kule Nyuma when he was discussing about the latissimus dorsi muscle. Then you have the uh, plano fascia. And then you have other deep fascia which tend to separate different compartments of the, of the leg. This is the leg. And then you have the, some of the tibia and the fibula bone. We have uh, compartments of the leg as how we shall see later but the um, lateral anterior some kinds of compartment of the of the leg then here we have another diagram which shows fascia as you can see this fascia is running here from where the thigh starts from this point it attaches the pubic bone and it runs downward all the way to the whole leg so if you'll be going to the dissection of cadaver you'll observe these fascias however sometimes it is very difficult to observe them but in some cases you can observe them this uh, is very common even in mcqs and it is very common even in different aspects when we'll be discussing about the the lower limb we'll see it is called the fascia fascia lata. Now let's move to ligaments. A ligament is the code of dense connective tissue often associated with the joints and the muscle attachments. There are two types of ligament. One is dense fibrous connective tissue. Normally none is stretchable. So uh, this type is, it is a made up of more connective tissues compared to the, to the cells. And it is because uh, it is made up of dense connective tissue it can't stretch. But the second type it is the dense connective tissue rich in elastic fiber. So presence of elastic fiber allow them to, to have a, a certain kind of movement or allow them to be stretchable to a certain degree. So therefore they are fairly stretchable and form capsules of joint and ligaments associated with joints such as ligaments of the foot. So this diagram showed the ligament and this the knee joint as you can see we have the lateral lateral collateral ligament we have the anterior cruciate ligament we have the medial collateral ligament we have the posterior cruciate ligament here we have the tibia bone we have fibula and then we have femur so as uh, as you can see uh, for example this posterior cruciate ligament tend to connect between the tibia and the Femur. Also, for example, lateral or collateral ligament connects between the the tibia and the, and the femur. So uh, I mean the fibula and the femur. As we discussed in in elements of arthrology, that the ligament they, they help in the stabilization of the of the joint. Stabilization of the joint they make the joint more stable. And also here we have different ligaments of the foot. As well, you can you can see the diagram. Let's move to tendon. A tendon is regular, dense connective tissue, normally associated with muscle. And normally, tendon function to attach the muscle belly to a bone. And as I told you before, that tendon always 
they possess the proprio receptors which tend to send the information from the muscle to the brain about the state of the muscle whether it is contracted or it is relaxed bundles of collagen fibers are arranged in a parallel arrangement to withstand several hundred of, of kilogram so tend on the media pool always of fibrous connective tissues so this is the example every muscle is attached to a bone by a tendon so we have many tendons in the body and tendons normally they are not given names but sometimes they can be given names if maybe they are long or even they are positioned but normally they are just known as tendon so for example here in biceps brachii we have some of the tendons which attach biceps brachii to its origin and then you have some of the tendons of triceps brachii which attach to its origin and then you have other tendons which attach it to its insertion as you can see this is just the magnification of how the biceps brachii tend to attach on its origin on its origin for example this is the collagen process of the the scapula one among the origin of the short head of biceps brachii is how we shall see later in detail about the biceps brachii and other muscles of the upper limb and even of the lower limb. We have other tendons on the lower limb here in the leg and even in the arm, as how we shall discuss it later. Now let's see about the clinical application. Why are we studying now about myology? What is the clinical application? What is the importance? But now some myology is not only about knowing the Stenocloid mastoid muscle, it's not only about knowing the names of the muscle. As the medical personnel, it is important to know about the clinical conditions associated with the muscles. Because when you go in wards, you not uh, the patient will not need to know that his muscle is called maybe it is quadriceps femoris, but the need of the patient is is to be diagnosed about his or her condition and to be treated. So we have about uh, uh, four clinical conditions associated with the muscles, but uh, later on we will be discussing about uh, other things on your uh, third year of study. You will be notified about uh, many conditions associated with muscles. Now, uh, our first condition is muscle paralysis. We have muscle hypertrophy or atrophy. We have uh, tumor of muscles and we have uh, myositis. Muscle paralysis is associated with the loss of nerve supply to the muscles. Loss of nerve supply to the muscles. Kwa unakuta kamba nerve supply yuko na supply muscle either in pata injury, either in accident or any clinical condition and then due to loss of nerve supply to the muscles that lead to the muscle paralysis. Then muscle hypertrophy or atrophy. Hypertrophy means muscle may increase in size and increase in size in terms of hypertrophy uh, it can be associated with the exercises muscle can can increase size that is what you can call as uh, hypertrophy and then kama muscle uh, maybe kama mtu amefanya labda amelazo kwa muda mrefu extended bedding inaweza kusababisha muscle atrophy muscle inapungua size lakini pia we have tumors of muscles tumors is just a cancer cancer of muscle however sometimes tumors can be benign also we have myositis that is the inflammation of muscle now muscle paralysis is the complete loss of muscle function caused by damage in nervous system that means damage in the nervous supply or innervation of the muscle the loss of muscle function may be permanent or temporary Muscle paralysis can be accompanied by a loss of feeling or sensory loss in the affected area if there is a sensory damage as well as the motor. Kwa kama ni hiyo affected area kuliko kuna sensory information ambazo zinachukuliwa, muscle paralysis itapelekea sensory information is you lost. So you can't sense anything from that area. Lakini kama kuliko kuna certain motor action inatakiwa itokee, let's say movement, muscle paralysis itakufanya ushindo kufanya any kind of movement and they always call they always call it in Swahili ame paralyze ame paralyze means ame lose 
nervous connection to that muscle or nerve supply to that muscle. Clinical condition which causes muscle paralysis, it can be nerve injury due to trauma. When you are saying trauma, trauma means a major accident. Mtu ampata ajali ya gari, imetokea injury a certain nerve. So trauma is just like accident. So trauma can lead to nerve injury. Then you have spinal cord injury, we have stroke, and we have diseases such as Parkinson's disease, we have poliomyelitis, multiple sclerosis, and botulism. Kwa hiyo, uh, details of these diseases, tunda kuona uko mbele either kwenye anatomy, kwenye physiology, or even in your other causes. Tunda kuona details of how these diseases, they can they can occur and how they can affect the different muscles. So this diagram show different conditions about the muscle paralysis. For example, this is the Elbs, Elbs passing about the muscle paralysis. For example, in this diagram, muscles of this side is me, is me pull side, kuliko muscles of this side. That means the muscles of this side is me paralyze. So ziki paralyze na kuzi national kufanya any action kama kuliko kuna maso ya pande moja manakiyo itafanya action sana kuliko nyingine na at the end of the day kwa kama maso tunajua kwa kuna antagonist kama maso moja nafanya flexion mungina nafanya extension maso wa flexion aki paralyze manake maso wa extension ya tafanya kazi na kifanya kazi ule mgu utakuwa extended na utashindo kufanya tena flexion kwa sabu maso wa flexion na me paralyze also we have hypertrophy and atrophy kama nivyo sema hypertrophy ni increase in size of skeletal muscle through growing in size of its component cell remember kwenye hypertrophy cell has yongezeki in number the cell they don't increase in number but they increase in size and normally nime kumbia it is because of the exercises mtu ana lift gym ana inua gym ana piga push up many times hiyo hapa inapelekea muscle hypertrophy so the most common type of muscular hypertrophy occur at the result of physical exercise such as weight lifting and the term is often associated with the weight training. Kwa hiyo hiyo ndo most common hypertrophy ambayo inatokea lakini muscle atrophy is a decrease in the mass of the muscle. And remember again here ni kwamba cell za muscle hazipungui lakini ana decrease muscle most often ni kutokana na kwamba mtu labda amefanywa long term bed resting kwa hiyo muscles zimekuwa inactive for long time for example muscle atrophy can be temporary or permanent and is most commonly experienced when a person suffer temporary disabling circumstances such as being restricted in movement and or confined to bed as when hospitalized so these are just some of the most common conditions occurring in clinics kwa unazo kwa una kwamba ini maso ini maso hypertrophy the number of cells does not increase hypertrophy does not increase the number of cells but it increases size of individual cells but when we are talking of hyperplasia Hyperplasia means the number of cells tend to increase. So muscle hypertrophy means it tend to increase size of individual cell, but the hyperplasia the size of individual cell can remain the same, but their number tend to increase. For example, uh, we we may have uh, left ventricle or myocardium uh, myocardium hypertrophy, left ventricle hypertrophy. Na hiyo condition na sababu na different different situation ni kama hapo mtaenda ku discuss kwenye cardiovascular kwenye physiology different condition ambazo zinaweza kapelekea left ventricle hypertrophy lakini unaweza kuona hapa bwana mkubwa alikuwa anapiga push up sana na kuinua gym kwa ana muscle hypertrophy due to physical exercises lakini pia unaweza kuona here we have a patient ambaye ana muscle atrophy due to muscle paralysis kwa muscle paralysis itasababisha muscle ishindwe kufanya kazi isipofanya kazi ile maso kukaa long term without functioning itapelekea itapelekea maso atrophy yani maso itakuwa ina, ina decrease in size then you have t 
tumors of the muscle and these are, are, are known as or they are named as sarcomas so for example this is the tumor of the muscle in the forearm unaweza kuona hapo hiyo enlargement kama ndivyo sema kwamba tumor ni cancer and tumor it can be i mean tumor tunaposema cancer always it is malignant malignant means it can spread from one part of the body to another lakini tumor sometimes they can be benign benign manake uh, the cells tend to proliferate and they increase in number enlargement inatokea lakini it can't spread to other parts of the body and it's very easy to manage a benign tumor as compared to malignant one however also even a malignant tumor in the, in the first stages it is very easy to manage it kwa hiyo conditions kama hizi pia zina zinatokea and then the last clinical condition is about myositis that is the inflammation of muscle tissue caused by different factors such as viral or bacterial infections kwa hiyo inflammation most often it is because of the infection ambazo zinakuwa zimeingia kwenye hiyo muscle now this marks the end of our session and about the reference book you can visit Sinelzi clinical anatomy by regions and you can visit Mule clinical oriented anatomy also for the sake of diagrams if you want to see about different kinds of muscles you can visit the Nettas atlas of human anatomy there you will see diagrams explaining about different facts of biology thank you everybody let me wish you nice studies